That's never happened. It's fine. All right. Okay, is the projector thing gonna work? We're good? Okay. Okay, good evening. So, a couple things before I start the speech, all right? So, first of all, as a good teacher, uh, I'm gonna walk you through what we're gonna accomplish in this lesson before we start, all right? So, there'll be four things, so you can keep track if you're growing bored, you'll know how close the end is, all right? Second thing, uh, as a teacher, but also as kind of a nerdy academic, I, I don't really have ideas of my own. Mostly what I do is I read other people's ideas and then I kind of piggyback on them. So that, that's how university works, so get used to that, all right? <laughs> so for this speech, what I did is I read a whole bunch of other people's graduation speeches, and then I kind of boiled them down with the necessary ingredients for the graduation speech, all right? So this here, this, this isn't the title of my speech, this is the topic of my speech, all right? <laughs> So, uh, we're gonna walk through the parts quickly, and then I'm gonna deliver each of the parts. All right, so Scott, slide. All right, so the first part you need in your speech is the jokey introduction part, all right? I'm, I'm not sure the purpose of it. I think it's supposed to set you at ease, kind of, but really just make people nervous, like, is he gonna make fun of me, all right? But nonetheless, it's, it's essential, so we're gonna do it. Okay, next slide, Scott. All right, the kind of interesting facts part. This is a favorite of mine. So I might do a thing like look at actuarial tables and talk about how many of today's graduates statistically will still be alive in the year 2100, right? <laughs> or I might do that thing where I look at college graduation rates and I say like, oh, amongst these people will have 16 medical doctors and two congressmen, you see what I mean, that kind of thing? Okay, so th th that part, I'm really looking forward to that. I think I got some good stuff with that. Okay, ne next slide, Scott. All right. The very core of the graduation speech, the heartfelt advice part, all right? Now, because my speech is kind of about a speech, this isn't going to be advice, it's going to be advice about advice. It's kind of like the first derivative of advice. Okay. All right, and then finally, Scott, the emotional farewell. Okay, now if you know me, you know that's, that's going to be very short. Sorry. Okay, we're ready to start the speech. Okay, first slide, Scott. Uh, okay, there, okay, good, good. <laughs> Thank you, Sky, and welcome graduates <laughs> to a very big week. Welcome teachers, and thank you for being here, but most importantly, welcome parents. Because graduates, if you haven't figured this out yet, this week's not about you. This week is organized for your parents. You had your senior skip day, all right? You had your prom. This week, this is about mom. So if mom wants that 37th photo of you with the diploma, this time with all the cousins, next time just with grandma, you're just gonna smile. You're gonna do a picture, okay? And some night, like this, 25 years from now, you're gonna have a little pay it forward moment, like, oh, I see, okay, now I get it. <laughs> My daughter's two, so I feel like I'm in an awkward transitional point right now. I gotta see both perspectives on that. All right, a couple of individual shout-outs that I promised. Uh, first of all, Pooja, where are you? All right, Pooja, this is the first time Pooja's ever been in the room before I started the lecture, so thank you. <laughs> uh, oh, my God. Kenny Lee, where are you at, Kenny Lee? <laughs> Kenny, no laptop tonight, so this is the first time he's ever heard what I'm saying. Thank you. <laughs> And finally, Victor Chan, you hear? Victor? Victor, this is the first time you can hear me speak and not feel guilty about not having done the reading. So awesome. Uh, so just relax and enjoy. I'm not going to call anyone. All right, I'm really excited to be here tonight because I really like graduation. They're awesome. It's like the best parts of a wedding, the best parts of a divorce, all put together. It's great. <laughs> if you didn't like high school, what a great time to end it. If you liked high school, great way to end it. It's awesome. <laughs> the second reason I'm really happy to be here tonight is that some of you will know I'm also uh, a graduate this year. I finally finished my degree back in the States. Um, because I was doing my degree in Pittsburgh, I wasn't able to be at my own graduation, which was two weeks ago. So to be invited here tonight is great. I can kind of piggyback on your glory a bit and get a little bit of graduation feel out of it. Um, and to be perfectly honest, I've actually been doing that for a few months now, trying to learn what I can from HKIS seniors. 
I got senioritis. I don't know if you noticed that. <laughs> Haven't done a thing in months. Um, this speech, I didn't write this. This is the speech Mr. Kirsten wrote for Friday's graduation ceremony. <laughs> I just changed the fonts and took out all the stuff about social service. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I stopped marking anything back in February. All those grades in power school, I've just been paying middle school kids to add numbers randomly, between a B plus and an A. Nobody complains, except Chris Hoy. <laughs> Finally, I, I planned and executed my own senior prank. Uh, a couple weeks back, I replaced a whole broadcast of news and views with an episode of Game of Thrones. <laughs> but it turns out literally no one watches news and views. <laughs> okay, did you guys enjoy the jokey introduction part? Yeah. All right, good. Here's a transition. I thought that was a smooth transition. Get it. <laughs> Okay, now I have to read a bit. All right, I'm glad to be giving this speech at the beginning of graduation week, because though I'm a fellow graduate, I'm a graduate who's done this a couple times before, and I want to give you some advice about the days ahead. Mostly I want to give you a few things to watch out for. You see, graduation is surprisingly difficult. First, it's an emotional time. You're all moving on in some significant way, no matter what you're doing next year. And parents, teachers, grandparents, Twitter followers, etc. They're all going to want to wax poetic about what this event meant when they were there, and what it should mean for you. And all that is, is fine. That's great. That's why we organize graduations, to experience those kinds of moments. But we should also be on the lookout for their excesses, and I'm going to talk more about that later. The second reason graduation can be difficult is that it just doesn't feel like there's that much left to say. After all, people have been repeating essentially the same ceremony for a really, really long time, is, is the facts part. So thanks to the Oxford English Dictionary, we know that graduation ceremonies go, far, it, bleh, go back at least as far as 1639, because the first recorded instance of the word graduation in the English language was by a guy named John Spottiswood, who rose so high as to be Archbishop of St. Andrews and the primate of all Scotland. I don't actually know what that means. <laughs> he used the word graduation in our modern sense of it for the first time and survived to us. And he, he wrote this in his uh, The History of the Church and State of Scotland. He wrote, quote, every Earl's son at his entry should give 40 cents with so much at his graduation. <laughs> I, I don't know what that means. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure a couple of you are sons or at least cousins of Earl's, so any money Friday night would be greatly appreciated. <laughs> Mr. Dirks asked me to mention that, all right? Okay, the Oxford English Dictionary tells us that the word graduate goes another 160 years back before that to 1479, but at that point, it didn't imply any kind of ceremonies. You were just a graduate, someone who finished some school, and that's all it said. All right, before 1479, things get fuzzy. Numerous places on the internet, not any you would want to trust, describe the first university graduation ceremony as taking place at Oxford in 1432 and requiring each graduate to deliver a sermon in Latin. So you got off easy. And finally, let us end your high school career by citing, I hope for the last time, that greatest of sources, the Wikipedia. Wikipedia tells us that the oldest high school in the world is Chengdu Shishi High School. It was founded in Chengdu province sometime between 143 and 141 BC, and presumably the good people of Chengdu Shishi have been having some kind of ceremony to mark the end of school for most of the years since. For the record, the school functions. I checked their website. I Google translated their website. That counts as checking it. Uh, and if the mass correct, they will be having this July their 2000th. 154th graduation ceremony. So, we know we've been doing this for 373 years for sure, and we've probably been doing it for 1,700 years before that. So there's a lot of history to wrestle with when you set out to write your graduation speech. And it's not that surprising that many of the same lessons come up again and again. And that repetition is part of the point. We don't hold graduation ceremonies in order to see something edgy or avant-garde. If we wanted that, we'd go watch Sky, Hunter, and Thomas do their improv in some weird basement club in Soho. And we've done that, and it was awesome, but it wasn't graduation. No, the point of graduation is exactly to take part in something unoriginal.